Revolution. Gang, 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 Jed Locks, Lock, Lock Nation. Wagwan is that guy. Doing some dread reviews today on subscribers. Well, subscriber. Today's video, we're talking about Savage Betty. She is uh, a lady from the States that has some epic freeform dreads. Blonde, natural blonde. And uh, we've been in touch over the years. And uh, without further ado, I feel like this dread review is definitely needed on the channel to inspire the women out there that are looking to freeform of any nature because these dreads are definitely inspirational. So let's look into this dreadlock review on Savage Betty without further ado. Let's jump right in. You know what we say it. Savage Betty, she did send me an email saying, hey John, here you go. A few things I might have left out on my video clip. I've got 30 dreads. Used to be 37 before my Congos. Also, I lost a lot of pics of my dreads earlier in the maturing stage, like year one and two. I had some sick pics. Take care of my dude. I'm stoked to see what you put together. <clears throat> These are her locks in the beginning stages right here. Very, very beginning stages. We just see a few locks happening here. Short hair down to her collarbone, her shoulders. Not really so much locking happening in this photo. Is this a date here? 10, 14. So two, so February 13th to October, we now see a full head of dreads happening here. Upside down dreadies, locks, wispy tips. Like I was saying before, very blonde. And look at the roots here. There's nothing tightly knitted right down to the root. No interlocking, no crocheting, no retwisting or anything. Like just natural, you know? She might've had some crochet and backcomb done at some point. But for the most part, like she did start to freeform these and even allowed the Congos to come in and let them settle. These here in the beginning stages, you can see a lot of the wispy tips. This is a natural thing. Some people like them, some people don't. Leave me a comment down below. What's your take on wispy tips? I think they look fantastic. Rocking the Not Nation hoodie. Big ups. Oh, actually, it's not the hoodie. This is the t-shirt. Not Nation t-shirt. Big ups to Savage for supporting the nation. And this is... The Congo, one of the Congos here. You can see how thick and actually almost kind of flat that it's come in. Really cool to see. It's kind of rare to see girls with flat Congos coming in. So, I mean, all the more to you for letting those Congos drop into play there. Um, here we can see a photo of her with some length happening after all these years. <coughs> um, the frizzy hair on the top. Definitely something to take note of because it's natural. It's an organic look. And I'm happy to see the length that she's attained over all these years. Super thick, actually, for a lot of these dreads. Um, you can see that a lot of the wispy dreads have kind of taken themselves in. Or whether she had blunted them herself. Uh, you can kind of see some of them are still wispy. Some of them are like half wispy. And she's even got them tied up with her own dreads. Probably one of the biggest goals out of all dreadheads is to get their, their locks to lock up naturally and then being able to get long enough that you can tie them up with their own locks. You can see here some more frizzy hair on the top, loose hairs being embraced, embrace the frizz as always. And I'm honestly very fascinated by naturally blonde dreadlocks. You can really see the definition when they're lightly colored like this. And these are super matured at this point. Whereas you can actually see, well, it looks like there's a little knot here as she tied up. This dread here looking kind of flat and blunted at the end. Congo's being cut down to alleviate stress on her neck. How much stress did you alleviate from cutting the Congo's down is my question. And here we see some length happening here. Right down, right down to her waist now. So we've seen the length happen from her shoulders right down to her waist. That's a really good progression with those locks. She does have some beads in here. Actually, in one of her videos, she mentions that this is actually a earring, a ear plug gauge. 
and this is in the beginning stages when they were just much shorter and um so it's a great look and, uh, and i love the natural bluntness that's going on in some of these locks even like some of this kinkiness going on here kind of showing that these locks have a mind of their own and of course the comparison between here to here just shows the dedication of, of being able to stick to the journey now here's what i'm noticing this dread has a different shade of blonde from here to here is it truth that these were bleach blonde before and then natural blonde had come in after embrace the frizz definitely i feel like frizzy hair is part of having locks i feel like people that stress out about having frizzy hair and always want to go get it maintained kind of defeats the purpose of really enjoying and embracing the lock journey because essentially we're when locks are to be grown it's to relieve of any vanity in our lifestyle to release of any thoughts of judgment from people where you kind of accept yourself for who you are so we can see the length happening here and they just get thicker and thicker actually as they start to mature more really impressive set of locks um, here again is that earplug acting as a bead joining a congo that had happened naturally 30 dreads in entirety and this is more so in the beginning stages when her locks were more loose so lots of progress like insane progress going on uh this is cool when the front of her hair was actually banged out and not in locks as of yet and here's a here's a shot showing them getting lengthy so i love the fact that i'm not really seeing any dye or any harmful shit being put and then you can see here the bangage <laughs> has uh has locked up now at the front no more loose hairs at the front this shot really cool because we got three angles at the back of her head at this point interesting that some of these locks are at different lengths like these ones versus these ones right here pretty freaking cool i love the look of this blunted tip that's a natural blunt kind of like congoed up and locked up on its own little mattage right there some of these locks really starting to loop and kink in their own form taking on their own shapes now she did send a few emails so that's the first one uh here's some more photos some of these might be duplicates and we've seen this one now here's a great shot from the front really looking like a lion's mane here braided awesome look one big french braid pulling them back and styling on them so i mean there was a quite a few some of these are videos backstory my congos and it, i don't know why it says polish is she polish yak shimash let's look at a few of these videos that she sent Let's look at a few of these videos that she has sent in. We'll see what she says. So this one showing us her dreads in the beginning stages when they were a little bit shorter. Nice angle from the back here and on the side. Cool looking. Looks sick. Here's a video of her Congos. This video is actually pretty cool. So let's check out my dreadies at almost three years with the exception of Mama Dread and a few others who are like five and six. But uh, here we go. First of all, let's celebrate. Yeah, good health get lit. <laughs> Dreads that were started out freeform. Mm. And after about a year and a half, I went and got them separated and back home. Mm -hmm. So separated and back home after a year and a half of freeforming. And actually, uh, there's still some frizzy hair, uh, loose hair on the side here, which is like the bang hair. 
since then I've had no maintenance done. This one's kind of clipped down here. Oh, and I started off um, my journey. I, I had pretty much a shaved head because it was right after um, it was after a coma, and I wanted to shave my head and kind of start over on my hair. So. Damn, a coma? Holy oh, shit. Um, you know, this is pretty much all this is all these dreads are like, you know, started from pretty much nothing. Wow. Really good progress there. Means even more to me, but um yeah, so yeah big time. Those. I got some cool ones. What? So this is my oldest <laughs> Not laughing at the dreads, it's the position I like to film. <laughs> like that. <laughs> <laughs> the things we do to be a dread tuber. A lot of a lot of people taking videos in the bathrooms and stuff too. I find that funny uh, and amazing at the same time. Is this is this what is part of the niche, right? It's part well, of the niche. A year now, I want to say. It's a nice Y split dread. Holy crap! And of course, like let <laughs> let them Congo up. They get stronger. They get they definitely get stronger. <laughs> this is this is the thumbnail right here. <laughs> yes, Betty. <laughs> Having fun with the locks. And see? then let's see, we got oh, we got this guy, which is cool because he's Whoa. like yellow flat. Yes, and this is the part that's very rare: is flat Congos on white women. I said it. I don't see it too often. This is probably one of the first times I've seen it. Yeah, that looks dope. What's this 277 mean or the 211? 271. They're, they're a little bit frizzy right now. I... But you see, the flat ones don't even need to be palm rolled unless you're trying to make them um, cylindrical. Flat dreads are my favorite. Them. Which, by the way, I use a combination soap for my dreadlocks. I use okay. Dolly Locks. Shout out. Um, Sick. Dolly Locks, I've, I've seen that product around before. I go for the patchouli or the non champa if I can. Here's another Congo. Ooh, oh, and this one looking really flat as well. This one I think is from about January. Wow. Um. Sick tattoos, by the way. Dr. Bronner's and then I mix the two in like a little container. So she's saying she mixes Dolly Lock soap with Dr. Bronner's soap. I would add a little bit of water in there too. Add some sea salt, add some essential oils. And then that's yeah. how I kind of make my own shampoo. Yeah, that's, hell yeah, that works. That's kind of what I've been doing lately too. Why to stick to just one when you can so make it a works concoction? Out. I love it. And I'm at, it's Michigan, it's hot, summertime. So I'm at about a week and a half, I'm washing my hair. Now, Michigan. This Congo right here is actually. They just legalized cannabis really over there. It's super cool because I call it my reverse Congo. Um, it was all. Oh, look at this. You know, one, one, oh, um, whoa. That dread. And what? in the beginning of this year, maybe wow. like December, um, it started to split by itself naturally. Into oh, whoa, I've never seen this before. Dreads, which is probably wow. because there was just too much weight right here on my scalp. So my head just naturally decided to Crazy. Die, which I think is really, really cool. <clears throat> That's super unique, actually. I haven't seen that done before. The reverse Congo. Can do that, your head can do that, and I don't know, it's, it's pretty boss, but um, boss, you know, it's crazy that our hair does have a mind of its own essentially, and it wants to just do what it does. That's why we must leave it, you know, we must leave our hair to do what it does, no manipulation. Yeah, so let's go ahead and give you a spin here 360 from the side, loose hairs on the bangs still, and then on the back, we can kind of see this dread looks kind of cool, it looks like a little colored, like it's red or something. You can see the bobby pin here holding these dreads down, I'm guessing, so they don't fall in front of her face all day. Oh, and then I also have another Congo that's happening. Sick. Which did combine itself, but they came together, but it was very, very loose. So I did put an old silver plug, one of my old gauges, on it to kind mm. of reinforce it just for a couple weeks. So we will have this guy happen in. Reinforce the Congo. Uh, yeah, yeah, I see that. A nice big fat, fatty when it grows out. But, yep. Fatty. Sick. She's so chill. She seems very chill. And the 
bangs are still, um, you know, I got some short ones up here because they are still on their baby journey. Bang dreads. I just tried my bangs about four or five months ago. I was, oh, so she I dreaded the bangs, bangs up. I wanted, I wanted them yeah, long, yeah. you know, so. Yeah, full head of dreads. Rock that so shit. that's it. Um, no cool beads really other than this really mm -hmm. awesome septum ring that months ago. Oh. I was thinking of bangs. Um, the, the tip of this dread was... Kitty cat. Dyed red, but it's like. Okay, so I did see that really, dyed really red down there. But this septum ring is really, really cool. You can't even see the back anymore. It's thrown over, so all you'll see are like these silver balls. Cool. You know, as <laughs> continue to mature and grow, and and then I got this little bead. I've had this guy for a long, long time. That looks like a glass bead. A and you see that in our finger? Savage. Gathering, my very first rainbow gathering. I heard about this rainbow gathering I before. She's still in it. Yeah, that's it. That's it for sure. No wraps, nothing like that. But, uh, yep, so those are my dreads. Probably won't do another update. Crazy. Whip it around. Wow, 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 wow. Like a helicopter. <laughs> Get to the chopper. Uh. The chopper, get to the chopper. I go on. Go on. So at least, I don't know. <laughs> Did she almost lose her balance there? <laughs> <laughs> Probably won't do another update. <laughs> <laughs> she did. <laughs> she lost her balance. <laughs> at least, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> this, this is awesome. This is awesome. I, I appreciate you sending these clips in. Pass the booby link. I think that'll mm -hmm. be a epic link. So until then, have a beautiful day, people of the interwebs. Yeah. Interwebs. And there's one more here just about her backstory that we can look at here. Mad quick. Five minute video, her backstory. Hey man, how's it going? Um, just to give you, I guess, a little backstory um, on my dreads. Sticking down here. Um, I started, um, it was about 2012 when I had my like first dreadlock um, going on. And um, collect collectively over the next couple of years, like I just like, would gain like another one or like you know she said 2012 starting so almost eight years in now and then um you know just straight free form i wasn't you know putting them in or anything i was letting them do their thing and then um and there's still mad length compared to that last update and the septum ring is still down here uh about five years ago i sat down and um had someone do one one um giant like what do you rip and twist you know mm -hmm. with some back home just to finish my head off so that it wasn't like so um you know partially done i had gone back to school and whatnot and i was trying to just like clean it up a little bit but that was the only um that was the only maintenance hmm. really i've ever done on my hair Okay, one time maintenance, holy. So from that, from that session of, of uh, getting them crochet or getting them back combed and, and, and twisted up, there was a little bit of crocheting done in that process, like um, for that setting. So there's like a few little like scars and whatnot towards the bottom of a couple of dreads. Um, oh, okay, that makes sense why we could see that in the earlier photos really hard to see because but no, I can see it though I, I see this sort of maturing here yeah that's very very like crochet like these are mature. like like these compared to the Congo's new growth you'll see a difference where the Congo's will be smooth and these ones will be kind of loopy and lumpy a little bit maybe even a lot tighter to touch and squeeze they'll be very compressed compared to the new Congo growth well See them in there, like they really are like legit, just freeform dreads. So anyhow, since then, um, I haven't done anything to them. I just washed them. I'm a big fan of Dr. Bronner's. Um, 
I also like to use Dali Locks, uh, Dread shampoo and, and all yeah, their, yeah. Um, stuff. They've got a good selection over there, the one I can. Um, but yeah, Dr. Brown is just way right now. I'm using peppermint, which is pretty awesome. Um, cool. I haven't washed them in probably like two weeks. I'm here in Michigan. And it's winter. And, um, yeah, I get it. In the winter, it's harder to wash them because they don't dry the same in the cold as they do when you're in the they summer. They have gained a lot of uh, weight over the past year, especially when they're wet. So I haven't been as uh, diligent great about keeping them super clean right now. But you know that's okay. Um, I also too I only have one Congo left because I trimmed a couple of them off. Oh shit, one left. She had like four off. before. Um, I had like three or four different Congos. Um, I trimmed, trimmed them off because I was just trying to get rid of any extra um, weight that I could because I've been starting to have some neck problems. And um, mm. I was actually pretty tempted to almost comb them out here like a couple months ago, which I, I really don't want to do. I love my dreads. I've wanted dreads since I was 12 years old. Cool. You know, before the internet, any I knew anything about dreadlocks. Like I tried to like grow out dreadlocks. I just stopped washing my hair and and brushing yeah. it. And I thought that's what you did, you know. Technically, yes. We need to wash it. Just don't brush it. It's all about just not and brushing I it. My friend actually started calling me Crisco for a little bit because I was just like a greasy, greasy twelve-year-old kid wanting dreadlocks. But I was really into yeah. skating, um, subculture, and snowboarding, and I always like. You know all that the hippie vibe scene and uh yeah. i always saw dreadlocks and i just thought they were beautiful man like always and um of course dreads are beautiful you know festivals and rainbow and this neck tat looks pretty new was it that in the last yeah, video and whatnot i was like oh man like one day so yeah so for the past seven years now um i've been on my dreadlock journey and um i'll do a spin i'll show you what they are looking like and yeah, man, big ups to your channel. Uh, been following you since you had your interlocks. And uh, yeah, keep it up. Keep up the good work, John. Always. That's what we're here for, to spread love, get more people into the into the culture. Let's get to a million. A million dreams, right, you know? Go. All right, spin a Rooney here. Sick. Definitely looking fire. Way more maturing has been happening here since the beginning. Oh, and just, <coughs> this was, uh, this is so short because this was a. And you can, you can see the new growth here from here, from the scalp to about here, which is maybe one to two inches. It's just regular hair, right? And this is the start of dreads right here. This will grow out and start to lock on Bang. its own. These are my bangs. And um, I had bangs the first couple of years of my dreads. And then three years ago, I decided to uh, grow the... And for a bang, that dread came out really thick. It's out. So that's why you've got, you know, these shorter pieces up front. But yeah, I love it. I love all the um, different lengths and textures. I'm not big on jewelry or beads. I do have this cool... Hmm. This is actually a septum ring my girlfriend gave me. And you can see the back of it now. Before she was saying you couldn't see the back. And I remember when it was way up here. So they've grown quite a bit. Yeah. I'm going to stand up and do a proper spin for you. Right, let's see. Nope. I don't see. Well, that was good. That was sick. Savage Betty, subscribe to her. I'll press that subscribe button there. You know, of course, of course. So, I mean, I'm, I'm interested in knowing what you guys think of Savage Betty's locks. Uh, I feel like they're pretty savage, pretty legendary. Eight years in the game now, that's some serious dedication. And you know, you, you're only two years away from the 10 year mark. And that's something I've never even gotten to. Uh, and, I, and I'm trying to get there with this set of locks. So um, I'm actually very inspired by you. And I would love to see you get to 10 years uh, to help everybody else, and my, including myself, get to 10 years as well one day. 
and uh, that's five years from now for me. And you know, done know I'll still be making YouTube videos by that time. And um, and yeah, I truly appreciate everybody that sends in their content for these dreadlock reviews. I, I you know just trying to keep the culture moving, trying to keep the culture growing, trying to keep those that are misunderstood about locks to be overstood. You know what I'm saying? So. Yes, shout out to everybody. I'm going to head out. Thanks for watching this episode, and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Until then, peace out, one love, and I'll see you guys in the next Dread Luck update. I'm gone. Peace. Adios. The Neon Shine.